Good morning, and welcome to the least you should know about Native American accounts. Into a discussion of uh, Native American accounts, let's talk a little bit about the literary canon and the fluidity of it. So the term canon refers to texts that are deemed worthy of reading, studying, and teaching. In American literature, the canon has evolved significantly over the last 40 years. And the flu part of the fluidity is, um, can be seen in the expansion of this literary canon, right? Why has this expanded? Why is it fluid? Well, times have changed, haven't they? And people have changed. Uh, we have, uh, where uh, before 40 or 50 years ago, the literary canon was by and large determined by upper white class, straight, uh, white males, right? And fortunately, um, uh, things have changed. And so there has been a corresponding interest then in becoming more inclusive. And so voices that have traditionally been marginalized and never really heard now have been recognized. And these experiences have been validated. So we know, for example, that there was a Native American tradition. We know that there's an African American tradition. And in the 20th century, again, we see uh, 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 even more expansion, right, with Hispanic, Chicana, Chinese American. Uh, gay, lesbian, uh, all of these uh, uh, unique voices now are becoming uh, uh, included into the literary canon. For decades, it seemed as though all anthologies of American literature began with Captain John Smith, most associated with the founding of Jamestown in Virginia, or maybe even William Bradford and his account of Plymouth Plantation there in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Now, most anthologies begin with Native American accounts and the accounts of English and European explorers who interacted with the people and the land of North America. So I wanted to show you all, this is an, um, a, a very old anthology uh, of American literature, the first volume of the tradition, uh, I, I'm sorry, the uh, Norton Anthology of American Literature, which is considered by many to be sort of the gold standard for um, anthologies. And, and uh, you can see right here, right up front, right out of the gate, like I told you, it's Captain John Smith. So. The canon uh, has evolved, it's expanded and changed, and um, I think uh, it's a pretty good thing, actually. So long before the English and the European explorers arrived, North America was populated by many tribes, each with unique traditions and practices. And we must remember that these cultures transferred knowledge and history one, from one generation to the next orally and through performance. So what are some possible consequences of this fact? Well, if we think about it, it's likely and logical that no two performances were ever really identical, right? Uh, and oftentimes, right, they were, there was performance involved in ritual. And um, so there was, uh, the, and so as a result, the stories themselves, as they were told each time, could, e could evolve. They were dynamic, right? So that's a, something to keep in mind that's very interesting about this tradition. Also, think about this. There's something, fund that something fundamentally changes when a story is put down in writing, in words. So for better or for worse, they become fixed. They become static. The story becomes unchanging then. And if we think back to this, these cultures and these traditions that relied so heavily on the oral transmission and the performative qualities that went along with this storied um, a tradition, we can see that um, uh, you, you know some uh, uh, some folks might not like the idea that they they've been written down and fixed. 
uh, in the way that they that they have, right? Because something might be lost uh, in, in that experience. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, at least something that I've always found very interesting about the Native American accounts. All cultures and traditions have stories of how the Earth was created and how its geographical features and people came to be. Uh, within the Native American tradition, there are two significant tropes. There is the Earth Diver story and the Emergent story. So Earth Diver stories generally feature a pregnant female who falls from a sky world into a watery world. Emergence stories, on the other hand, often feature animals and or people who emerge from within the earth. Creation stories feature a culture hero, an extraordinary being who is instrumental in shaping the world in its current form. Particularly interesting, this is uh, somewhat related, but uh, somewhat down a little rabbit hole here. If this kind of idea interests you, check out two works. Uh, Joseph Campbell's The Power of Myth, and then his uh, um, seminal work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Uh, and let me just say uh, briefly, if you're a fan of Harry Potter, if you're a fan of the Star Wars stories, then you need to be familiar with Joseph Campbell and The Hero with a Thousand Faces because George Lucas actually hired Joseph Campbell to consult on the original Star Wars with the development and storyline and plot the development of the hero Luke Skywalker. Uh, so uh, just tease you a little bit with that if this kind of thing interests you. Same thing with Harry Potter. Uh, and basically Campbell, and I'll paraphrase very briefly, Campbell's assertion in his work says that basically every hero in, uh, in, in a tale of adventure right, undergoes a particular arc Right, certain things characterize the development of a hero in his development and in his story and his adventure, uh, and it's a very interesting conceptual framework uh, to be familiar with when you're reading, when you're watching movies, and so forth. Right, I kind of nerd out on this stuff, so. Some creation stories feature a trickster character, often represented as an animal, such as a coyote, a raven, or a hare. The trickster story often helps illustrate or teach why certain social codes and mores exist. The trickster, like the shapeshifters in English and so many other traditions, in the Norse tradition, in the Asian tradition, in the medieval um, English and Irish traditions, uh, a, a, a shapeshifter can, uh, can shift its form. Um, uh, but the trickster in the Native American tradition can shift sexes, uh, can interact with both people and animals, uh, is um, uh, highly mobile, uh, is crafty and foolish. The trickster motif, though, is often recognizable in African American literature as well. And then, much later, like when we get to uh, the second half of American literature in the 19th century and the late 19th century, uh, popularized in folk tales. Uh, uh, such as the Uncle Remus stories, which you may be familiar with, popularized by uh, the Georgia writer Joel Chandler Harris, with characters like uh, Br'er Fox, Br'er Terrapin, Br'er Rabbit, et al., and others. So this is the least you should know about Native American accounts, but look, if you want to know more, Check out Native American Indian legends and folklore on the interwebs, the powerful and magnificent interweb, uh, and you will see um, just how many are out there. Um, keep the ideas that we've talked about uh, in this brief presentation in mind as you sort of enjoy the first few readings in the unit. It's been great seeing you and spending time with you this morning. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you're enjoying the class so far. I'm really, really glad you're here.